Welcome to Austria here in front of the Austrian Parliament. I'm protesting against uh, the new coalition in Lower Austria. This is our most important federal state and it's the second one which is now in a coalition with the Russian FPÖ, with the friends of Putin in Austria. And this is very unfortunate yeah, because this is exactly the same. I will explain it to my Romanian friends and Bulgarian friends. Exactly the same federal state whose regional elections in January have been so problematic and basically used as the reason for blocking Schengen and, uh, of course, uh, for Schengen membership of Romania and Bulgaria. So what's uh, the connection here? Of course, you know, Schengen membership of uh, Romania and Bulgaria would have helped these countries, of course, yeah, remove the border between Hungary and Romania uh, in physical terms. And that's, of course, what Orban doesn't like. And, of course, Putin doesn't like that because it uh, facilitates the supply of all the goods and uh, military supplies and take, um, oil and all these vital um, things which have to go to Ukraine now via Turkey and via the Balkans. They all would have been much easier facilitated uh, uh, when we were already fully in Schengen, these two important NATO allies in the eastern flank. But this was not to be, <coughs> basically because of the Austrians. yeah. And this is, of course, nefarious uh, on our defense effort, and that's in Putin's interest. And we have significant problem in Austria with Russian influ influence. Deripaska, Fiatash, these are the money boxes of Putin in Austria. They have massive influence. And of course, it's all about the defense of the big uh, gas contract. Uh, because we have this 7 billion, I repeat, 7 billion over 22 year contract with Gazprom and our state uh, energy company. And this was concluded in 2018. And of course, you know, if we keep a pro-European coalition, which is now, then this contract cannot survive <laughs> because the pressure is very high. If we go for a Russian coalition, which is on the national level as well, on the example of the, of the low Austrian elections, then of course they can defend this contract much better. And this is huge interest. You know, imagine it's 7 billion over 22 years. It's 150 billion euro contract. <laughs> I mean, this is big business. This is the biggest contract in our history. And it is definitely <laughs> worth fighting for, for those who negotiated, concluded it and benefited from him and are still benefiting from it. And it's not the Austrian taxpayers or the Austrian state, <laughs> just to get that right. It's the few who have the power to conclude and to influence state contracts in the energy business with Russia over the last decade. And I don't mention them because they will always sue me, as they do regularly now. And they try to intimidate me for that. And they try to suppress my voice as a pro-NATO, pro-EU and pro-Romania and pro-Bulgarian voice and pro-Balkan, of course, and anti-Serbian and anti-Russian voice in the Austrian political discussion. So they use, of course, their power. They are very rich people and they have all these uh, lawyers and they use their power to intimidate me and to silence the pro-Western voices in Austria. And that's exactly what they do, but they will not succeed. I will not be intimidated by the people who are basically treasonous representatives of Russia. And I don't mention any names now. But this is the situation here, and this is how it's connected, the, um, the Romanian Schengen, uh, re, uh, because you know, it, it's also important to understand that this is not just a Schengen issue. We are in this exact debate already since uh, the summer. Because why it happened? Because uh, the Austrian political elite has discovered that uh, the Ukraine war is too dominating for them. And this anti-Russian uh, result is damaging their economic interest in the gas business. So then they concluded they have to artificially launch the migration topic by whatever they did it firstly to strengthen the police and military we have the military at the hungarian border they got the order to really be very strict apprehend everybody so when you apprehend everybody the numbers are getting really huge because hungary is doing nothing in uh, tackling uh, illegal immigration or registering anybody so they did that and then secondly, they started the debate that we have an accommodation crisis, uh, trying to reproduce a 2015 style um, panic in the population. 
in order to serve the interest, therefore increasing the vote of the uh, FPÖ and hurting, hurting the SPÖ basically. This was the whole strategy in the summer with the so-called tent crisis. And then they moved onwards to the Schengen crisis. And now they concluded the coalition with the nationalists. And the next one is, of course, in their strategic efforts, is to end the present coalition between the conservatives and the Greens and to replace it with the nationalist co coalition. There's some demonstration here or something. Yeah. This is basically what's happening here now. And that's very unfortunate. And I call the European Union to help Austria because only with European help we can overcome this uh, complete disaster. Because as long as there is so much revenue for Russia in Austria, they have always the money to buy influence and they will always use that. Yeah? They use it in the big populist media and in, of course, all the networks they can organize. And as long as there is energy consumption from Russia in Austria, and then they can put some percentage as kind of a business case yeah, in order to facilitate their interest. And that's what they are doing in Vienna. Absolutely, that's how it's working. And, you know, of course, we should also deliver Fiatas to justice because that's, of course, the big unresolved way. And as long as he is here and his uh, extradition, extradition to America is blocked by the Austrian politics, then of course you know he is very interested to spend massively into the euro into the austrian politics because that's his case the long as soon as he is out <laughs> his case will be much lower and as soon as we have uh, confiscated all terry Basca items then of course his interest in austria will shrink as well so these are three things we need to do next to that um to the us bring of course, Terry Basker's economic grip on Austria to an absolute standstill and also then to clean up Austrian politics and media from this massive Russian influence. Because how it works, yeah? They are basically giving um, economic opportunities to Russian connected businessmen and they buy then media time or influence with their networks in Vienna in the populist media. <laughs> of course, it's all legal. But it's, of course, totally illicit in the war to do such things. And that's how they do it. And that's how they have such enormous influence. And then they put their mouthpieces in the media. <laughs> and who are then spreading anti-American hate and anti-European hate and anti-Ukrainian hate, American conspiracy. It's no coincidence that all these people are basically connected, yeah? It's all the same. The ones who say America is behind the Nord Stream 2 bombing and, you know, and all this kind of conspiracy, nonsensical things. And they are spreading it in the mainstream media. And the mainstream media employs them. And also this kind of populist media. I don't want to say the name, otherwise they me as well. And that's how it works. And these economic interests who were most of them have business interests since the Soviet time with Russia or inherited them then from the past or have whatever kind of indirect or indirect links to Russia and to the secret services. They then go out and have this media time, find their so-called offers <laughs> and then they employ them to spread hate, anti-Americanism, anti-Europeanism and all these evil things. This is exactly how Austria works. Yeah, we will have to fight that. I will do my best. In the meantime, all the best and keep in touch. Please support European Austria. Bye.